Hello, my name is Devin, and welcome to Module 4, Urban Sites of Dynamism, Protest, and Inequality. The first text today engages with dichotomies such as urban, suburban, center, periphery, and formal, informal. While these concepts can be useful for comparing, categorizing, and otherwise thinking about cities, we run the risk of confusing the map with the territory, by which I mean these dualisms are just tools and they don't represent the complex and entangled realities of cities. In text two today, you'll be thinking along with Durkheim about popular uprisings in cities. Durkheim is considered the principal or one of the principal architects of the social sciences and much of his work was concerned with how societies can maintain their integrity and coherence in modernity. Now that the traditional religious and social ties no longer act as the social glue and new social institutions are coming into being. This text deals specifically with social uprisings in Mozambique and the organizational character of these uprisings is described as strikes, which the author argues represents a new form of political dissent. Using Durkheim's notion of effervescence, the analysis challenges the oversimplified labeling of these events as riots. Now, I found it very interesting that this text, written in 2016, claims that the uprisings in Mozambique represent a far more direct confrontation with the state than similar protest movements in Europe and North America. And some of the reasons to make this claim are the blocking of state transportation, uh, infrastructure, uh, attacking police, and looting. Now, this past week, protests in every major city in the United States have exhibited all of these characteristics. Different media outlets have described these events as protests or riots, usually depending on political leanings. And community organizers and intellectual commentators have pointed out the power implicit in the language used to frame these events in the public imagination. While in the text, it says that looting in Maputo was largely seen as redistributive justice. In the States, it might be more useful to think of the looting, besides just an expression of frustration and hopelessness, also reflecting uh, elite capture, authoritarian measures, and a general breaking down of the social contract. When the state breaks the social contract, the people no longer feel the need to hold up their end of the bargain either. It can be useful to think of the protests as strikes because a strike implies collective bargaining and sometimes shutting down the cities is the only avenue left for citizens to force bargaining with a state that no longer represents its interests or even secures its fundamental human rights. Text three focuses, text three focuses on peripheral urbanization in the global south. It aims to decenter urban theory that until now has largely focused on the way that western cities developed and attempts to come up with new ways of thinking of the production of space. And text four looks at Lisbon and reconsidering neoliberalism in times of crisis. So I'm sure you'll enjoy today and there should be lively discussions until next time.